Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel, it's your boy Louis, and for today's video we're gonna be talking about everything that just happened during the coronation night of Miss South Africa 2023. I promised you guys that I was gonna be coming up with some content about this pageant. Unfortunately, I was unable to make as much content as I had planned, as I had envisioned initially, because as you guys know, I joined the pageant myself, first of all, and second of all, I've been traveling pretty much all over the world. <laughs> so just a few days ago, I was in the Philippines and as you can notice right now, I'm back in my apartment in Montreal. So already I came back the same day of the pageant, so I was jet lagged, tired and so many other things. But anyways, that's not gonna keep me from sharing with you guys my thoughts and opinions about everything that happened during the coronation night and especially because this was a historical moment since Natasha Joubert managed to win the title of Miss South Africa 2023. So congratulations to our girl already, but as I said, I haven't seen anything from the pageant itself. So today we're gonna be talking about the main events of the night being a swimsuit, evening gown and Q&A of course. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do, don't forget to be part of the conversation. So go down in the comment section and let me know how do you feel about my comments, the girls performance and anything else that you might want to add that has value. And also don't forget to hit the like button so that this video gets recommended to more people. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more content like this one almost every single day. Now, I won't keep you waiting much longer. Let's get into the reaction to everything that happened during Miss South Africa 2023. All right, let's get started with the swimsuit competition. Let's get to see how sexy Sexy, our fabulous look in swimwear dress just the right way. Courtesy of Shelly and Tracy B, accompanied by the incredible RB sensation Jimmy Nevers. Enjoy. Alright. I'm just gonna turn down the volume a little bit because, you know, usually music is copyrighted, so we want to avoid that. Uh, and also, it allows me to just talk to you guys, you know, at the same time, just give you my opinions about the show. As I said, it's my first time getting into it, so all of this is like first impressions, okay? Um, now, from Miss South Africa, I'm always expecting a lot of energy. The production, I always know it's on point, so I'm not even gonna complain about that. It's definitely good. And here we have Natasha. Looking incredible. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, the first thing that I'm gonna say, I mean, if you guys notice, Natasha is just glowing on stage. Look at her face. She is truly, truly, truly enjoying this moment and you can tell that she's just having the time of her life. I think that this is the right um, strategy because I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the night, you know, the coronation night of Miss South Africa is kind of a graduation night. Uh, we already saw all of the process and the efforts and the ups and downs during the reality show, during Crown Chasers. So at this point, the girls need to come out and impress the judges with their energy, with their presence, having fun on stage. And that's exactly what she's doing. Look at the smile. She's dancing. This is not like a technical swimsuit performance. It's all about enjoying the moment, right? So I think she's nailing it for sure. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that this woman did not place at Miss Universe. How can that be? Jail time, please. <laughs> All right. Mm. Jordan, okay. I have some thoughts about Jordan that mm, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys briefly. Let's just give her a chance. Okay, all right. Let's just go back to Jordan for a bit. Um, as I said before, you guys, because I was traveling and doing so much, I just really couldn't commit to watching the reality show, uh, the reality show of Crown Chasers as much as I wanted to. I think I started watching like one episode and I couldn't finish it. Um, so I really don't know how much Jordan delivered during the reality show, but. Based on this first impression, just the way that she's coming out on stage, I feel like there's a lack of energy. If you compare this performance to Natasha's, for example, who came out smiling and enjoying and dancing and you could feel like the, the positive vibes like um, coming out of her, I don't get the same thing from Jordan here. She's kind of stiff. Uh, she looks nervous. She looks defeated almost. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Um, 
it's the vibe that, that I'm getting so far. Uh, I think that there's need to address the walk. Um, and mind you, Natasha's walk wasn't even technical. It, she was just walking and having fun, but Jordi needed to work a, work a little bit more on that. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see what she got for us, Homba. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say about Homba. She has the most contagious smile. I just love her smile so, so much. Um, it just seems so genuine and like she's truly just like appreciating the moment, like just being present. Uh, I love the hairstyle. I think that it's so beautiful. It's so creative. It's so different from everyone else. It sets her apart. Um, and overall, I did enjoy her performance on stage. Now I'm going to say that arms, the movement with the arms, I think it's a little bit too hard, um, borderline distracting. And the walk kind of needs a little bit more work um, in terms of like the, the stairs. When she's going down the stairs, girl. Mm. All right, here we go. All right. Anke, please. The walk is playful, it's playful, but there's something with the face. The expression seems a little bit forced. Like she's forcing herself to seem like she's not nervous or she's enjoying it. Um, so that's a little bit distracting. Now Melissa's coming out on stage and my expectation is really high for Melissa. Huh. All right. I feel like Melissa is a natural at this. Of course, she has experience already in Miss South Africa. So look at her. She's having fun. She's feeling herself. But she's just being, like, uh, natural. There's nothing extra going on, nothing crazy, nothing major added to set her apart from everyone else. Nande, um, I haven't seen her performance, but I heard positive comments about her, so let me see. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Nande is just like Natasha. She is enjoying the moment. You know, rather than rather than enjoying the moment, I would say she is owning the moment. That's what she's doing because she's not just allowing herself to walk on the stage or to give a technical performance, but she is truly uh, being present and feeling the music and dancing with it and connecting with the audience and the judges and looking at the camera. And that's what it's all about. We're looking for confidence. We're looking for someone that is not going to be scared to go out of the box and just be unapologetically their self. So I think that this was a great example of that. So Brian is coming out. Let's see what you got for us. All right. There's, she was like waiting too long. Um, that was a little bit too long for me, but you know, Prayoni, it's a cute performance. I think that it kind of lacked a little bit of energy, at least for swimsuit. Um, but yeah, nothing that cannot be um, corrected for Miss Universe. <laughs> All right. Is there anyone else coming out? That's it, pretty much. Okay, so this is the final moment where everyone comes out. For me, standouts for this batch were definitely um, Natasha and Nandi. I think that both of them looked absolutely incredible, enjoyed the moment. And as I said earlier, they were not able to, they were not scared to own it, to really personalize it to who they are. So that's it. Now let's move on to the evening gown because as I said, we're gonna cover all three major segments of the pageant. Uh, this was uh, swimwear. Now let's move on to evening gown.
You know, I'm a big pageant girl. I love me a great gown and a great red carpet. So, you know, evening wear is up there. Top one for me. Please welcome back our finalists, dressed by the amazing Khashio Hankatia and accompanied by the sensational Brenda Mtoba. Enjoy. Mm. Oh, Lord. Here we go again with the music. <laughs> wow, Brenda. Brenda, show out. With the outfit, the makeup, the hairstyle, everything is on point. This is what I love about Miss South Africa. They will give you drama. Alright, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Again, look at Homba's smile. Homba's smile is just something else. I love it. <laughs> look at that. Oh my god, how can you not love her? Overall, I think that she looks absolutely stunning in this gown. Um, as the host announced in the beginning, this is a, a gown that was sponsored by um, a designer that is dressing all of them at the same time now here i would have just been like a little careful because we are borderline about to have a nip slip we are about to have a wardrobe malfunction here so maybe that's just something that you know to be mindful of i wish that the gun was a little longer perhaps um but other than that very very beautiful i love the color reminds me of pia's gown at miss universe Now the walk though, the walk though needs a little bit more practice, it's not very f fluid, um, I feel like maybe she doesn't, um, she's not as comfortable just yet with heels, and that's a problem if you're joining a pageant and you cannot manage the heels. Oh. Uh-huh. I love, I love Nanda. Um, and I can already tell you that I love her walk better. <laughs> this is already a step in the right direction, no pun intended. Um, I do wish though that the, guns, the gun was longer. I told you the same thing about the previous girl, but um, this one is even shorter. So I don't know how I feel about that. Oh girl, look at her. Natasha is just perfect. She is the moment. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now, come on now. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to criticize. The walk, the facial expression, connecting with everyone, the audience, she gave us a little flip with the, with the cape. She is the definition of beauty. If you go to the dictionary and you look for beauty, there's a photo of Natasha next to the definition. Girl. Yeah. Bryony. Wow. Okay. Um... First of all, I love the gown. Very similar design to everyone else. Same designer, all of that, we already know. I love the gown, I love the color on her. It just fits her perfectly. The, the glam, the makeup, everything is on point. Now, I don't understand because she did the same thing during the swimsuit. She's staying on the spot for way too long. So that is taking a little bit away from, uh, for me from the performance. Why is she like waiting so much? <laughs> Girl, I don't know if you see like, just standing, maybe they were instructed to do that, but none of the other girls is doing it. You know, when I see the cape that the girls are wearing, especially Bryony now with this color, uh, it reminds me a lot of Amanda Dudamel last year at Miss Universe. Um, 
I think that a lot of inspiration has come out of that moment. Not just, I mean, I'm not saying that the designer is inspired by Amanda, but I've seen other pageants and other girls inspired by that particular look. Melissa, pink. I love this shade, it's very on brand. It's giving, it's giving Barbie doll. It's giving hyper feminine. Wow, the combination of the uh, of the color of the gown with her skin tone, with the hair, I feel like I'm looking at Diana Ross or something. Goddess. Very nice. <laughs> But anyways, let's move on now to the most important part of the show, in my humble opinion, which is the Q&A segment. I'm super excited because this is my favorite part. I love to analyze, I love to criticize, I love to get feedback. Maybe they will never see this video, but that's fine. I love to, you know, talk about Q&A. So here we go. It's time now for a Mo Fire moment of questioning, probably brought to you by Mo Fire Energy Drink. These are quick fire questions that the judges will ask now. Each finalist will draw a judge's name from right here, from whom they will receive a question. We will give them exactly 30 seconds to answer that question. Hmm. Starting with Humba. All right, Humba, let's go. Thank you, Humba. Your question, courtesy of Joanne Strauss. Good evening, Humba. Social media has created a society which is somewhat personally disconnected and digitally connected. How would you encourage people to put down their phones and work on real connections? Okay, before she answers the question, I'm just gonna say, y'all, the questions at Miss South Africa just hit different. They don't ask pageant party questions. They go on full on with like deep, meaningful, with substance questions. Like there's meat on the bone. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Okay, let's see how she handled that. Well, South Africans, are people who are built with connection and community. I urge us to all go back and to really search for true meaning and purpose in the people that we are. So I want us to put down our phones and to really seek for ourselves and look for our own knowledge because this is who we are and these are the things that we would stand for. Thank you. Thank you so much, Humber. Hmm. Um... She had some strong arguments in there. I like the the way that she um, phrased some like some parts of the answer, but I think that towards the end she kind of lost the trail of where she was going and ended quite I don't want to say weak, but it was quite general. So I don't think that it was specific enough to support uh, the answer and end up making um, a statement, which is what what, what would have been required at this particular point in the competition. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if this is mm, what the judges were looking for. So. How do you guys feel? By the way, just let me know in the comment section how do you feel about the questions or my comments and feedback, whatever it is, so that we can, you know, talk about it. Nande. Nande, come on now, girl. Come on now, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Nande, your question is from Leandy. <laughs> Hi, Nande. Some people are of the opinion that women who are not mothers and are unmarried are not experiencing or part of true womanhood. What is your opinion on that view or belief? Basing womanhood on childbearing and marriage is sexist and it also it also 
it disrespects and it devalues any other woman who chooses to do something different with their life. And it especially excludes trans women. It's time for us to look at the qualities that we possess as women, which is our uniqueness, our selflessness, and our tenacity. And that is what defines a woman. Thank you. I love this. I love this so, so much. I think that she was very passionate about the answer. Um, and I think that she uh, was very specific with her answer. And that's what I really, really love. Um, because she was able to address point by point uh, the elements that were needed to, you know, provide an impactful answer for this particular question. Um, I'm going to say, I think that she was almost too overwhelmed with emotion, with passion, to the point that, I don't know, it almost came across a little bit stressed. Uh, you could see her even um, when she went back to her spot, she was almost like catching her breath. Um, I mean, this is Q&A, so understandably you will be nervous, but that's my only comment, uh, my only feedback. Other than that, I think that the question was, uh, the question and the answer that she provided was just incredible. How do you guys feel about it? Let me know. <laughs> Next up, Natasha. Here she comes. All right, Natasha, your question is courtesy of Miss Universe Rimini. Hello, Natasha. Good evening. Do you believe it's more important to ask a child who do they want to be when they grow up or what problem do they want to solve? Ooh. Definitely who they want to be when they grow up because it's not a child's responsibility to seek solutions for damage that our generation have done. We, we are in charge to cultivate our transformational leaders and to cultivate those mindsets. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> now that's how you answer with confidence, with passion, with conviction, with substance, with everything. And I mean, with grace, look at her. Um, I mean, Natasha is a pro at this. As I said earlier, I have no idea. I still cannot like wrap my head around the fact that this woman was unplaced at Miss Universe. Um, I think that out of everyone so far, she provided the best answer for me. Um, this was perhaps not the most difficult question out of the three questions that have been asked so far, but um, I will say the level of intensity that she had in her answer, the structure of the answer, the substance, um, and just the overall feeling. You could feel that from beginning to end, it was a very cohesive answer. Um, and that the audience um, understood and was impacted by her message. You just need to listen to the cheering of the crowd. So once again, um, this was a home run for uh, Natasha. And I mean, she even included a, a little bit of the transformational literary endeavor. So for a moment, you will wonder, is she trying to go back to Miss Universe or like what's going on here? But absolutely, absolutely stunning. Next up, Bryony. Come on, Bryony, no pressure. Bryony, your question is courtesy of Tuso Mbedu. Here we go. So, South Africa faces many challenges, including poverty and inequality. How do you envision using your platform as Miss South Africa to address these issues and make a positive impact in the lives of those who need it? So as a Miss South Africa, I would want to work with government institution so that they can really enforce and increase the basic income grant so that it becomes fair and accessible to all people. The problem is, is that it's not access accessible in the moment. I believe that financial assistance is the first step that we need to take to really alleviate inequality and poverty. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Brioni. Okay. So for Brioni, this was not like a revolutionary answer and that's okay because it was, not so, it was not a revolutionary question. It was nothing that we haven't heard before in a different pageant. Um, however, what I like about her, she kept it um, simple and she kept her composure. You could see that she wasn't nervous, she wasn't freaking out, she was very, very uh, on point about the things that she had to say. She was able to present her answers 
uh, very eloquently and at the same time in a way that it was very clear and very accessible for the audience. At least that's the first impression that I get from her answer. Um, also, she talked about something that I'm pretty sure the majority of people, you know, at least uh, most of the people in South Africa can relate to, which is, you know, being fairly compensated and equality and having access to, you know, enough financial resources. So this is um, a timely thing more people will most likely agree with. So nothing to criticize. There's nothing mm, wrong about this answer. So not a lot of feedback here. Just good work. Yes, <laughs> do it anyway. Thank you so much. Melissa, of course, your question will come from the amazing Debbie. Hi, Melissa. South Africa is stuck in a destructive pattern. How will you encourage not just the general public, but young people who make up about 35% of our population to go out there and register and vote? Because it, it's the way that we can take back our power and more importantly, take back our beautiful country. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm telling you when I mentioned earlier that the Miss South Africa questions really are complex, are deep, meaningful questions with substance and require a lot from the answer. I mean, she only has a few seconds to answer this. And that question was already like 30 seconds just to read the question itself. Um, so let's see how Melissa is going to handle that. But damn, girl. Thank you, Debbie, for that question. I truly believe that we need to ask young people why they do not vote. We need to understand the reasons behind anything before approaching it. And I think the biggest problem right now is that young people are not reflected in government in parliament. We are standing here as five women who are powerful, ready to effect change, and we're confident that we can do that. Our voices matter, our opinion matters. So I also encourage you as young people, let us take up that space and let us make sure that we are heard. Thank you, Melissa. Wow, that was impressive. I actually really, really enjoyed her answer. Uh, this was potentially my second most favorite answer of the night, besides Natasha, of course. Um, I love the fact that she talked about going to the root of the problem, so understanding what is it that uh, is causing the youth to not want to vote, and also the fact that maybe the youth doesn't feel motivated to vote because they are underrepresented already within the government. So they don't feel like they have that space, like they have that impact or that political influence that um, would reflect the values and the priority that, that our generation has um, within the government. So very, very good. So very, very, very good as usual. As I said, you know, Miss South Africa never disappoints uh, in terms of substance and eloquence when it comes to the Q&A. So you guys, as I promised, those were my reactions to the top three segments of Miss South Africa. Uh, of course, we had the evening gown, swimsuit, and Q&A, of course. As I said earlier, uh, the winner of the night was Natasha Joubert. No surprises here. I mean, she definitely um, deserved the crown. And what's even more interesting is that ever since the, cor the coronation night, more information has come out. Natasha has publicly admitted that she will not compete internationally. Her goal was really just to obtain the crown nationally to work within her um, to work within the country with uh, local organizations and just you know have her reign as miss south africa uh, she will be given the opportunity to her um she will give she will be given the opportunity to other girls to go to miss universe uh and potentially miss supernational which by the way is unclear if miss south africa renewed the franchise for miss supernational so i guess that we will find out uh in the upcoming days or upcoming weeks uh, let's stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you guys go ahead and let me know in the comment section what did you think about this entire thing, the outcome of the pageant, the performances, the Q&A, the gowns, everything. Go ahead and let's talk about it to make this more interactive. While you're at it, don't forget to hit the like button, of course, to uh, help this video get recommended to more people and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one almost every single day. As usual, I thank you for being here with me and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye.